Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, today I came across this article titled, Where Did the Indus Valley People Come From? The most common and most widespread theory about this is uh, has to do with the Aryan invasion. We don't really know. Uh, essentially, people from the Iranian plateau and and other parts of um, of Anatolia and in the Caucasus came down from wherever it was the Aryans came from. It could be uh, the Scythians I was talking about. It's very the, the term Aryan is very is a loaded term. It means a bunch of different things to a bunch of different people, but um, in essence, this uh, group came at some remote time in the past. They came through and they spread their uh, genetics and and traditions and and even some of their language into what's now India here. That was a pre a prevailing theory. One of the issues with this theory was it was really hard to prove because a lot of the DNA that they f they found in the Harappan civilization, the Indus Valley, which by the way wasn't it's only been about a hundred years, almost a hundred years since since they discovered the Indus Valley civilization. So there there really hasn't been that much time, but uh, during that time, since in the years since uh, discovering it. It, it's been really hard to recover DNA from the skeletons uh, that they found there. And because of that, it's hard to sequence the DNA. It's hard to compare it to other uh, populations nearby. Up until uh, recently, and that's what this article is about, they find this uh, woman, the skeleton of, of this woman in, um, in Rashiga, uh, Rakigari, which is in uh, modern-day Haryana which is, if you guys can see it here, it's in northern uh, India. It's in this, uh, I guess you would call it a province, pretty close to Delhi. And this is a very, very significant Indus Valley site, one of the biggest. And just to give you guys some context, here are some of the uh, mounds, the Rakigari Mound here that they excavated. Here's some more excavations underneath uh, some of the the floor not the floor but the ground here underground there's a there's a very there's a vast network of chambers and houses and stuff and even alleyways and streets so this is what we're uh dealing with here and this is the skeleton of, of the what's known as the rocky gari woman and they were able to uh sequence her dna and again i mentioned it's very difficult because the, the if you've ever been to india that the climate there is not conducive to preserving dna it tends to uh die and and become denatured so denatured that it's impossible to sequence and we'll talk about uh this first genome sequence uh, a little bit later so uh they sequence the dna of this woman from rakigari which is the largest town in indus valley civilization even larger than mahanjo daro um the dna belongs to a woman who was buried four to five millennia ago uh, which is now a part of haryana i just talked about that her genes point to an ancestry of ancient Iranians and Southeast Asian hunter-gatherers. So, um, right away, um, instead of, if you guys can see the map here, instead of the Aryan hypothesis, which is basically the people of Iran here, the Iranian plateau here, the Zagros Mountains, and uh, the Caucasus, and, and modern-day Turkmenistan, these people came in. Instead, the DNA is pointing towards Southeast Asia here that people came up and over. And a, a, f a further monkey wrench in this, in this idea is the fact that the farming techniques, the agricultural techniques, are pretty much the same as the ones that came from Iran. So, th again, th th this is starting to uh, lead... It, this is leading to other hypotheses regarding the spread exactly how ag agriculture spread to india um was it an independent up up uprising like did, did it just evolve independently in india the indian subcontinent or did the ideas just make a more roundabout way into uh, india um so those these are some of the things that this article explores uh, genetic scientists say that this does not mean that her ancestors live in Iran or Southeast Asia. In fact, they almost certainly lived in South Asia for thousands of years before her. So she has this genetic marker that indicates that her genes at some point in history came from um, Iran and the plateau there uh, and also DNA from Southeast Asia. 
but she, her ancestors did live in South Asia for a while before that occurred. So um, again, we're talking about something, some sort of migration that brought the genetics over to India sometime in the remote past, not immediately uh, her generation or her, her, uh, relative, her, her, her ancestors a couple generations before her, not even them, it goes even further back. Uh, the study also offers new insights into how farming began in South a Asia. Our findings do not prove a separate invention of farming in South Asia, which is, uh, this is a very famous geneticist, uh, David Reich. He's from Harvard Medical School. Um, he, and he's the one who also led a team of researchers from India and Germany, and they, they're the ones responsible for se sequencing the genome. So he says their data is consistent with the theory that Western Asian agricultural tech, which is again in Turkey, which is uh, like Gobekli Tepe, like that agriculture that I've talked about in previous videos, those ideas moved to South Asia through adoption or ideas from neighbors. So what kind of neighbors do they have here? They ha well, they had the Chinese, they had um, Southeast Asia, and then they had Afghanistan and Iran, and Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and the people in Tibet. So the, the, the ideas must have come from one of those at some point in history because again we're the, the the technology is so similar that it can't be discounted that it had come up independently of uh turkey so some there was some sort of network some exchange of ideas going on and there was some level of stability amongst the communities living not only in the indian subcontinent but all throughout all parts of asia southeast south asia the middle east the near east uh, Asia Minor, all those places, they must have had some sort of uh, connection with each other to some degree in order for these ideas to freely pass through um, each other. Because again, how does adoption, how does the spread of ideas occur? It's almost, like a, it's almost like a virus, right? I'm sure you guys have heard that analogy before. It spreads, it infects a mine, one mine at a time, and usually that's done through close proximity of, of communities, um, trade, uh, cooperation, and um, all these other uh, stabilizing, civilizing factors. Uh, ancient human remains found in various sites of the Indus Valley hardly yield intact DNA. The hot and humid conditions in these regions destroy any trace of DNA. I talked, talked about that. So what they did was they painstakingly screened 61 skeletal samples excavated from the graves in the area, uh, Rocky Garhi and were eventually able to detect a very small amount of DNA in a single sample from a woman's remains, which was that picture I showed you earlier. After more than 100 attempts, they were able to sequence the DNA, comparing this DNA with those of 11 individuals from two sites in Turkmenistan and Iran. That's, again, that's here in the, in the west, the, nor the northwest of the Indian subcontinent. Um, they, they compared the DNA that they found in northwest India and compared them to skeletons in northwest Iran and Turkmenistan, which is also northwest. Um, and the researchers prepared a genetic profile, and then from this profile, they say, has signs of Iranian-related ancestry, but no evidence of pastoralists who lived in the grasslands of Asia and Europe. So, again, they, they're, they're Iranian-related, but they don't know where they were living at the time. So they could have lived in a number of places. They could have lived in the Iranian plateau. Um, they could have lived in South Asia, which is where they, the team believes the data points to them living, which is in South Asia for many, many thousands of years before the Indus Valley civilization even became a thing. Um, so again, the Indus Valley civilization goes back really far, almost as far, at, like around the time as, of ancient Egypt. Um, those are the most uh, recent or the, mo the most distant dates that they have although there's been uh, speculation that it goes even further, although there's no hard evidence that I know of that dates it back further than the ancient Egyptians. Um, they're about concurrent with the day that we have now. Um, but th this DNA goes back even further than that. Um, not only is this a significant technical feat because of the difficulty in sequencing the genome in the first place, um, sequencing genomes from South Asia, period, is a major challenge. Um, but since they pulled it off, um, it shows that the Iranian-related lineage present in the Indus Valley people split from the natives of the Zagros Mountains in Iran before 8000 BC. So what does that mean? So the Zagros Mountains are here uh, in western Iran that separate 
uh, basically part, parts of Iraq and modern day Saudi Arabia. Um, and there are people here who split off and went to India a thousand years before the first documented case of agriculture. So about 8,000 BC is when these people split off into India. And then 7,000 BC or so is when you start to see agriculture rising in Turkey and, and, and Iraq and, and the Fertile Crescent and such. Um, so since this is the case, since the, the, this group of people split off a thousand years before um, agriculture became a thing in the Fertile Crescent, then the descendants of the world's first farmers who lived in the Fertile Crescent had no role in introducing farming to South Asia. So again, how did they get farming in, in India around that time without having the influence of the people from the Fertile Crescent? That is a million dollar question right now. That is what they're trying to figure out. And the DNA studies are showing that the hunter-gatherers in Western Anatolia, again, Turkey and around Gobekli Tepe, the R1B genetic marker, uh, they adopted agriculture from their neighbors in the east. So let's look at the map again. So they, Turkey, these people here, they got agriculture from someone in the east. They don't know exactly who. That, that's what the, the DNA is suggesting here. Um, and then they spread agriculture as they moved into Europe. And um, that was one spread of agriculture. So if we zoom out here, um, I, did an, I did a video on this too uh, a while back. So these people in Western Turkey, they went into Europe and all the way as far as uh, the British islands and they spread agriculture and all the way up into the Nordic, uh, the Nordic part of Europe as well. But it also went the other way too. It also went into China. And again, this, this seems familiar, right? This, this migration pattern, this spread of ideas, if you were to overlay it and superimpose it on the migration patterns of the Scythians or the people who we know today as the Scythians, it seems like these migration patterns are very, very similar. They all went the same way in all directions. So maybe they, they're, the two are related. It doesn't mention that in the article, but this is just uh, one, of the con one of the things that I noticed as I was reading this. Um, something similar might have happened in the vic vicinity of South Asia where a hunter-gatherer population could have copied farming innovations from their eastern neighbors and then spread them further through movement of people. Um, again, this is contrary to the Aryan uh, hypothesis. Uh, there is little doubt that farming arose multiple times in different regions of the world. Uh, fossilized pollen grains point to multiple plant domestication and farming events in India. So again, uh, South Asia has always been a prominent seat of ancient farming. Um, it's, it, it was just as big here as it was in, in the Fertile Crescent at around the same time, perhaps even earlier. So what does this all mean? Well, number one, there's, this is, all this information is coming from one sequencing of a woman, from one woman and in Northwestern India. So the next logical step is to try to sequence more DNA and really get to the bottom of uh, where these people came from. And then you can start answering larger questions like about their culture, where their culture came from, their technology, their values, what exactly were they eating? Um, where, where did they inherit certain genetic traits? Did, did they have some Denisovan or Neanderthal in them? What, what was the, of course they did, but what was their percentage and all of that stuff? And how, how, how are they related to the people in, in um, Southeast Asia and perhaps even Australia and um, the supercontinent there, Sundaland? Um, that, that, all that remains to be seen. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this. If you know anything about India, if you know anything about uh, Mohenjo-Daro, um, any of the, the Indus Valley civilization, um, anything like that, let me know and I'll talk to you guys later.